I don't care what anybody says. The United States of America is a Christian nation founded on the principles and wisdom of Jesus Christ. And so we give him thanks first and foremost above everything. The original sin of this country is that we invaders shot and murdered our way across the land, killing every Native American we could and making treaties with the rest. This country was founded on genocide before the word genocide was invented, before there was a war crimes tribunal in The Hague. When we finally stopped actively killing Native Americans for the crime of living here before us, we then proceeded to violate every treaty we made with the tribes, every single treaty. We piled crime on top of crime on top of crime against the people whose offense against us was simply that they lived where we wanted to live. Very few people are aware that the United States of America's prophetic destiny is foretold in the second half of Revelation chapter 13. But there is a view that is not in harmony with the Holy Scriptures, that it starts off in its embryonic beginnings as this meek and humble God-fearing lamb, then it makes this transition into a dragon. This is not the case and we shall explain why. Revelation chapter 13 verses 11 to 17 details its role on the global prophetic timetable where each verse consistently says and at the beginning as highlighted in red. The word and is a particle that joins words and sentences. There is no change but a consistency in the text. In London's National Archives, there is a document dated to the late 1600s titled America and the West Indies Calendar of State Papers Colonial. And in the province of New Hampshire, the first of its capital laws said that the penalty of death is fixed for those who, having had a knowledge of the true God, worship any other God. A law based upon worship. So in line with Revelation chapter 13 and verse 15, this death decree will eventually be imposed, which is a tyrannical brand of worship. The narrator will ask this question, is America lamb-like? When a number of men separated the 13 colonies from the British crown to form a new nation in 1776, today we call the United States of America. The romanticized view of history is that since then that nation has been a liberator of mankind. But in August 2022, a document was published titled Introducing the Military Intervention Project, a new dataset on US military interventions, 1776 to 2019. And from when that nation was founded, it read that according to MIP, the US has undertaken almost 400 military interventions since 1776 when the United States was founded, with half of these operations undertaken between 1950 and 2019. Over 25% of them, that is a quarter, have occurred in the post-Cold War period. In a book titled The American Empire, an ordained American Methodist minister, John Swamley Jr. said that most Americans assume that on the whole, United States foreign policy is concerned with the prevention of war or when war comes with the resistance of aggression. But the religious rationale for World War II and subsequent US foreign policies has contributed to the worldwide dominance of the United States and the revolutionary reaction to the American Empire. The 18th century Baptist minister Isaac Bacchus described America as being dominated by an ecclesiastical tyranny and religion has been a central role in the development of that nation. But today, the churches are desperately praying for an evangelical revival. For in the 21st century, the churches are declining rapidly. You could say her corrupt past is catching up with her and she is losing thousands of her young people who are fed up with their hypocritical bureaucracy. And when she is cornered, she likes to play the victim using the persecution complex card when secular observers know it's nothing more than a front because she has lost her once immense influence over the US society. 
Not only are the churches financially supported in billions by the US government, she spiritually exploits her own members where she amasses wealth that is on par with the major US corporations. She dominates the US Congress, making up 92% of its senators and powerful political figures are pushing for it to be returned back into a Puritan theocracy in line with its prophetic destiny. The churches are not only in full support of US foreign policy that includes the endorsement of its global bloodbaths, but the late US protestant theologian Reinhold Niebuhr philosophy still dominates US foreign policy around the world, where not only US presidents use his philosophy to bomb and kill innocent people around the world. But in the 21st century, the Carnegie Institute is very clear that his protestant philosophy is the ideological cornerstone for the global war on terror. Armed, unmanned, and high-tech. Drones, or remotely piloted aircraft, are becoming a ubiquitous battlefield presence. Predator drones are a staple of U.S. foreign policy. They have been used in Afghanistan, Pakistan, Bosnia, Serbia, Yemen, Iraq, Syria, Somalia, and now Minneapolis. Though the protesters didn't see it, it was flying over their heads in order to help federal officials gain situation awareness. And though reports indicate it was unarmed, people are angry and afraid. To kill without trial or evidence suspected terrorists, even American citizens. We may not have realized it at the time, but Trump is the bodyguard of Western civilization. This was a man who was fully embraced by most of the US churches, though he has a track record of hobnobbing with men like the late Jeffrey Epstein and is now being exposed for igniting the far-right insurrection in the capital. This makes the gospel very hard to preach and the narrator will explain why. A friend of the narrator was giving a Bible study at his home to a friend who was a non-Christian. And he said to his friend that the United States of America is lamb-like. The non-Christian started to laugh uncontrollably in his face and he said, America? Lamb-like? And this man gave his reasons why it can't be. He said, how can it be lamb-like when they colonized the Native Americans' lands and brutalized and killed the indigenous population? How is that lamb-like? The narrator's fellow soldier in Christ was embarrassed and did not know what to say. He gave another reason. The United States was founded as a slaveocracy, not a democracy. Her economic infrastructure was not built upon the Puritan work ethic but upon the dehumanizing unpaid labor of black Africans, where the churches were instrumental in corrupting the character of God. They may have started off as domestic servants, but eventually torture, rape, sodomy, and pedophilia became routine in that so-called protestant nation. The founding father, George Washington, a slave-holding Freemason, passed into law the Naturalization Bill of 1790 that said only people of European descent can be classified as US citizens. The qualification was not biblical, but ethnic. The following century, Dred Scott, a black slave, took his slave owner to the United States Supreme Court, for he was still held as a slave in a free state. Roger Brooke Taney, the fifth Chief Justice of the United States, a Roman Catholic in a predominantly Protestant nation, decided this man's fate in a so-called God-fearing nation that the New York Times described as his legacy, that was the nation's position on slavery in the United States. And the Chief Justice said in 1857 that a free Negro of the African race whose ancestors were brought into this country and sold as slaves is not a citizen within the meaning of the Constitution of the United States. So the question we ask again, is America lamb-like?